Hi, I'm Philip Hexton and I'm unique. You may recognise me as a comedian where I was awarded a Ability Award. Or you may remember my role on New Zealand's favourite drama, Shortland Street. Throughout my career, I've always hoped that other unique or disabled actors will become more visible in the media. So I've started a campaign called Unique Extras. Join me as I challenge some of New Zealand's most influential media experts with the aim of getting more diversity on screen. So Russell, disabled people are obviously absent from our screens. Um, why is that? In terms of work on camera, um, I think you, you're talking about the environment which is the domain of the conventionally attractive and the young. Um, so it, it is actually, there's, there's a very narrow range of physical attributes that, that get you on camera. I, I, in, in a way, I, even doing the show I do, I'm too old for that and I don't really scrub up well enough. You know, I, I feel quite lucky that, that I'm there. So the, the, there's quite a bit to push against there. I still think that television is probably less ready than its audience is to see disabled people on screen. I, I think the audience would cope. You, you often find, uh, in terms of exclusion stories, over time, it's often the public are ahead of the people making the decisions. Does the industry have a responsibility to be more open? I think the, the industry does have a responsibility. Um, uh, yeah, and there's a degree of their own interest in this as well. They want to reflect Society. They want to reflect the population because they, you know, they, that's who they're trying to reach. The advertising industry is really well set to do this, uh, and they, the advertising industry places depictions of ordinary people on screen all the time. You know, most of the time when you're looking at ads, you're being encouraged to relate to them, you know, to treat them as someone like you. And there's an incredibly powerful message if some of the people in those ads um, aren't, you know, conventionally able-bodied. I think that's really important. So, after talking with Russell, it's apparently there's a major attitude shift that needs to happen in the television industry. Russell's notion of diversity in advertising led me to seek out Qing Wong, campaign expert at Borderless Productions. So Q, advertising, the industry is pretty demanding. What are advertisers looking for to sell their clients' products and services? I mean, I think advertisers are always briefed to achieve the, the greatest outcome for sales. Um, that their clients can achieve. So, you know, they're looking at selling products in their best light, and to do that, they use talent um, that are sexy, beautiful, that meet the aspiration of what they believe their target market uh, want to achieve. And as a result, um, you know, you end up with beautiful, young, sexy, half-naked bodies selling a, co a bottle of Coca-Cola to us on a TV screen. And often that's the way advertising um, does go. In the last Ten years, you've seen more quirky characters like the Top Twins, Mike King, people like that, start to become currency yeah. with with advertising. What changes that? Who changes it? I don't know what drives what first, but. I think there's one thing that's happening is that viewers or the market um, are getting a little bit tired of um, being shown images over and over again that they can never achieve. And now we come to the point where we, we realise TV and advertising often doesn't reflect us. And so what will reflect us is a true re demonstration of, of what society really is made up of. Up until maybe Amy Mullins yeah. got that gig with L'Oreal Harris. 
I can't think of one disabled person that's been used to sell a product, particularly a mainstream product. Do you think we're ready for that? Absolutely. And I think the market is so cluttered and so busy that somebody like Amy Mullen's story um, and the fact that she has um, prosthetic legs and that she is a gorgeous person who has a disability um, is what's making L'Oreal stand out. And it's that unique factor that's L'Oreal's marketing and as a result they've been very successful with. Okay, according to Qijing, there is hope. And when I think of other minority groups becoming more prevalent, the rise of Te Reo Māori springs to mind. Time to talk to ex-news anchor and head of programming at Māori Television, Carol Hirschfeld. I wanted to sort of start looking back, maybe 30 years ago, Mm. If you were a woman, if you were Māori, if you were Pacific or any other cultural group, you probably didn't get to read the news, you know. And yet, now we have quite a diverse landscape of people. We do indeed. And, and you know, I like to think um, I was part of... Um, that, that changing environment. Um, when I became a newsreader, Māori and Pacific Island people would frequently come up to me and say, it's wonderful to see you um, reading the news and it makes me believe that I can do anything. And what's really important to me, it, it makes my children believe that they can pursue whatever they want and actually achieve their goals. And and I had no idea that symbolically being in the hot seat reading the news would have that effect. And I felt very proud to, to be part, as I say, of that, that change landscape. How are we going to now tackle the disability thing? Because we don't see disabled people on the screen. You have to be part of the conversation. And that means that you have to be in those roles where you're highly visible. It might not be easy to find those roles or create a niche where you are visible to mainstream New Zealand. But when you do, uh, you become part of the fabric much yeah. more. And as I say, people look and see and believe all is possible and that diversity is something that we need to embrace and in fact, we find strength in it. And the more we do do this as a nation, um, the stronger our base is for the future. So how can a project like Unique Extras help broadcasters like you create this change? What I think um, this particular project can do is, is put in front of those decision makers uh, what's possible and, and, and what can be truly beneficial to, our, to all New Zealanders. Perhaps to create the change I want to see, I just need to get out there and put in the hard yards. Next, I talk to Andrea Callens, casting director of Shortland Street, to get some practical advice. Tim, Andrew, what would be your advice to disabled people wanting to get into acting? Well, maybe some workshops and, you know, um, being an extra is kind of a little bit of a skill. You know, you still have to do the same thing every time they do a shot. So if you're in the background and there's two people there and they're supposed to be having a cup of tea and, you know, having a bit of a chat, then they've got to remember what they did, which hand they used for the cart, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, just those sorts of things to understand the, uh, the the language that's used, you know, so that they understand take one, you know, back to number ones and all those sorts of things we just sort of take for granted. Um, so, you know, maybe some workshops um, with them so that... Um, and it's kind of like about not being too interesting. Yeah. Because the, the very nature of, of, of extras is that they are like wallpaper. They're like warm props. 
who, who just create the environment just as much as you know, the, the props in the background. Um, and, and so if, if they're too interesting, if, if, if our eyes are drawn to somebody, um, then the audience starts to think, oh, I bet, I bet they're going to do something with that person. I bet that person's going to come up later and they're going to, um, you know, have a, come into the hospital and that, you know, because that's the way we think. We think everybody has to be there for a reason. And so if something takes our attention, we, we're sort of preempting what the writers are going to do. So what we've got to do uh, in order for this to work, you know, for both our sakes, is to kind of make it so normal that, you know, there, there's a couple of people there having a sign language conversation, there's, um, you know, there, there's a person sort of walking past with a stick, so that, so, so we sort of deluge them with, with differently abled people so that no longer becomes, oh, that's going to be part of the story. So how could we help you do that? We need all shapes and sizes to tell New Zealand stories. And, um, you know, um, we have a lot of Māori now, we have a lot of Polynesian actors, and so, uh, you know, I think um, um, disabled people need to be represented as well. Andrea seems confident that people with disabilities can get roles if they're good enough. Long-time disabled TV personality Graham Sinclair has been pulling ratings as the hosts have gone fishing for 20 years. Surely he'll have some inspiring advice. So you be now the only real life disabled person on New Zealand TV. Why do you think matters? I think that that I was kind of a an unusual set of circumstances. But I do applaud TV3. I mean, they've, they've continued to support me when I'm obviously disabled. Um, sure, it takes numbers to do it, but it also shows that people with disabilities can pull on a good audience. I think part of that's attitude too. You know, you've got to... I, I think that there are huge opportunities for people with a positive attitude. I think there are huge opportunities for people who see an obstacle is an opportunity and bloody nail the bastard rather than actually giving up. And I think that that sort of stuff um, can be, so I'm told, inspirational. So what would you say to disabled people that want to be in the media? Well, rattle the cage. If you've got something to offer, record something. Sh show what you've got in the medium that you're, you're able to perform in and start giving it to people, start pushing it, and start pushing it hard. Um, you know, in, in, in certain societies and situations, people from poorer backgrounds used to have to fight harder to get somewhere than people from a privileged background. It's no different with disability and, and people with normal abilities. We just have to fight a little harder to make the inroads. But it doesn't mean to say we can't. And the issue is that because we fight a little bit harder, sometimes our achievements are a little greater. And I think that's, that's wonderful. That's our opportunity. So in closing, what have I learned? Firstly, disabled people need to get out there. We need to attend acting workshops and auditions, and we even need to make our own shows, like Graham. Secondly, we need to show producers, advertisers, and others in the industry that we can add value to their product. And finally, we need the industry to yearn for something new, to see disability as unique, interesting, and part of the diversity of our country. So let's do it. Let's transform our media industry by celebrating more diversity on screen.